Another type of problem you should be able to do that looks pretty hard when you first look at it is a problem like 11 or 12 here. Kind of a vague question, huh? Construct a field of order 25? How? Construct a field of order 27? How? Are you kidding me? What in the world am I supposed to do? All right, let's give one of those a try. <clears throat> Maybe even both of them. Construct a field of order 25. How in the world are we going to do this? First thing to realize is the way to do this is to make it as a factor ring, a certain factor ring. In fact, we've already hinted at how to do this before. A factor ring of the form well, if it's going to have order 25, the representatives must be linear polynomials, AX plus B. It's going to be a factor ring, so it's, I'm going to add on some ideal. Where, again, if this is going to have order 25, you better have five choices for A and B. A and B must be from Z5. How do you create such a factor ring? It's got to be of this form, right? Take the polynomial ring Z5X and mod by some ideal. If I is an ideal in Z5X, such a thing will always be a factor ring. But why is it a field? How do you guarantee it's a field? Do you remember? There's something special that's got to happen with I. <clears throat> I is going to be generated by some polynomial, the principal ideal generated by some polynomial. And based on a theorem, what, what's the condition that you need to be true about the polynomial for this to work? Well, what's one condition at least? Either starts with an I or an R, and it's got reducible in it. <laughs> <laughs> Irreducible <clears throat> over Z5. And that's not quite good enough yet. If the representatives are going to be linear, it better be f of x better be quadratic so that you can, for example, take x squared plus i and reduce it to something linear, for example. Let's put the word an in here and the word quadratic in here. So how do you find such a quadratic? Um, to tell you the truth, it's trial and error. Um, so you might hope, this is just a hope, f of x equals maybe x squared plus one works some simple quadratic like that. Or maybe, maybe in general, maybe we should give ourselves flexibility here. X squared plus some constant C works. Maybe C is one, maybe C needs to be two, maybe it needs to be three or four. Those are the things I, that are good enough to check because we're talking about Z5. And it is quadratic. It's going to be irreducible if and only if it's got no zeros in Z5. So what's f of zero? It's C, not zero. C is going to be one, two, three, or four. There's no guarantee that any of these are going to work, but you're just hoping. F of one would be one plus C. And that'll not equal zero if C is one, two, or three, not four, though. Because again, we're modding by five. F of two will be two squared plus C, four plus C, and that'll not equal zero if C is two, three, or four, right? Not one, mod five. F of three is nine plus C, mod five is four plus C. That'll again not be zero if C is 
two, three, or four. Only one more to check. F of four, 16 plus C, mod five is one plus C. That'll not be zero if C is one, two, or three. So to make sure all these are not zero, looks like we should pick C to be two or three. Pick one of them. Looks like F of X equals X squared plus two is irreducible over Z five. So what can we say about that? That means I equals the principal ideal generated by F of X is maximal ideal, right? That's a theorem. These are theorems you should work at remembering. It's a maximal ideal in Z5X. So Z5X mod that ideal is a field. Is it a field with 25 elements? Yes. Why? Well, I'm not looking for complete proof, but uh, it's because anything, any quadratic or cubic or higher degree representative of the elements in the factor ring could be reduced to lower degree. How? It's because, so we're modding by X squared plus two. So this means X squared plus two plus I equals I itself, which is equivalent to saying X squared plus I equals negative two plus I. Effectively, it's like kind of like you're adding negative two to both sides. It's not literally what you're doing, but kind of like that. And since we can mod by three or five, excuse me, negative two becomes positive three. So what this is saying is anytime you do factor ring calculations here, you can replace any X squares with threes is what this is implying. It would also imply that, for example, you could replace any X cubes with what? Multiply this, um, factor it like that, replace X squared with three, multiply this back out. You can replace X cubed with three X. How about X to the fourth? So the fourth plus I could be thought of as X squared plus I times X squared plus I. Replace both of those X squareds with threes. Multiply three times three is nine mod five is four. You can replace any X to the fourth with four. Weird, but true in this factoring that is a field. And because of that, because you can take any higher degree polynomial and reduce like this to linear terms without writing it out as a proof, that's why all elements of the factor ring can be written in this way, where A and B are in Z5. You've got five choices for A, five choices for B. Therefore, there's five squared or 25 elements in this factor ring, which is a field. You have to do this for the exam. Probably not completely from scratch without hints. Okay, but you should, once you've got this as a field, you should also be able to do calculations in it. For example, you should be able to uh, find the multiplicative inverse of some element. So we're wondering what the multiplicative inverse of 2x plus 3 plus i is. We did, we've done this kind of thing before. You don't know what it is offhand, but you should be able to calculate it. We'd like to find A and B. That's a mistake there. There's a product here. You'd like to find A and B where this is true. Mod 
multiply this out, multiply the cosets by multiplying their representatives, FOIL. This would be equivalent to 2AX squared plus, what's the linear term going to be? Outside times outside is 2BX, inside times inside is 3AX, so 3A plus 2BX. Last times last is 3B. Replace x squared with three to simplify. It simplifies to three a plus two b x for the linear term, first power of x. The constant term is going to be two a times three is six a mod five is just a. Six mod five is one. A plus 3B is the constant term. So this gives you a system of linear equations. 3A plus 2B must be zero and A plus 3B must be one that you need to solve, you need to solve in Z5. Could you do it with matrices and vectors? You could. Is that the easiest way? Uh, perhaps the easiest way is to maybe multiply the second equation by three and then subtract the equations. Maybe the easiest way to solve it. It's equivalent to 3a plus 2b equals zero and 3a plus Three times three mod five is four. One times three is three. Make a little note to yourself that I multiplied the second equation by three and then modded by five. Maybe subtract the second equation from the first. The first equation from the second, excuse me. The three A's would cancel. Four B minus two B is two B. Three minus zero is three. So 2B equals three in Z5, what's your solution? It looks like B equals four in Z5, right? Two times four is eight, mod five is three. And then use either one of these equations to then solve for A. A would be one minus three B, one minus, 12 is negative 11 mod 5 is 4, right? Does that make a mistake or does that look good? So if I've now made a mistake, it looks like the inverse is 4x plus 4 plus i. Assuming I haven't made a mistake, It's like, that's true, we can always check it by multiplication. Again, FOIL the representatives. 2x times 4x is eight. Mod five is three. Don't panic, because we're gonna replace x squared with three. Outside times outside is 8x. Inside times inside is 12x. Looks like we get a 20x. That's good. Mod 5, that'll be 0. Last times last is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. Mod 5 is 2. Yeah, that's a 0. This gets replaced with a 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 2 is 11. Mod 5 is 1. This is supposed to be fun. I do think this is the most fun part of, of this stuff is doing this kind of, this kind of calculations. What about a field of order 27? 
27 is three cubed. Field of order 27. By the way, the answer I hope is pretty clear is, is not unique in these fields. There are different ways of constructing fields of order 25. We, we picked one way. There are different ways of constructing fields of order 27. We're gonna pick one way. So there are different methods. However, the methods do produce isomorphic fields, no matter which one you use. They're technically different fields, but they are isomorphic to each other when they have the same order. And these orders do need to be powers of primes. There are no fields that are finite that are not powers of primes in their order. That's a theorem that we haven't gotten to yet in the book, but it's a theorem. All finite fields have to have prime power order. Is a better way to say that. Oh, uh, so this is going to be a factor ring. Something plus I for some ideal I and some polynomial ring. And if it's going to have order 27, three cubed, I guess A, B, and C need to each have three possibilities. It's going to be a quadratic. Where these better be from Z3. <clears throat> It will, this is the, the way you want to construct such fields. The freedom that you have is in deciding what the ideal is, in deciding what the irreducible polynomial is. That's what changes the field construction and makes the calculations different and makes it a different field, though isomorphic, is in the choice of I and the choice of the irreducible polynomial. So we want I to be a principal ideal generated by an irreducible polynomial. And if my representatives are going to be quadratics, that irreducible polynomial better be cubic. F of X is an irreducible cubic over Z3, i.e. f of x in Z3x has degree three and is irreducible over three, Z3. I'm repeating myself here, just emphasizing different ways of saying it. So once again, it's trial and error. Find a cubic. Uh, that could take a long time, a little longer than the other one. Um, can I think of one really quick? Um, X cubed <laughs> plus X plus one doesn't work because one would be a root. Maybe two X plus one, I'm not positive. Um, Zero is not a root. One is not a root. Is two a root? Two cubes, eight plus four is 12 plus one is 13. Mod three is not zero. Okay. This looks like it would work. And as far as calculations in the factor ring, oops, x cubed plus 2x plus one plus i would be the identity coset, just i itself. And that's equivalent to x cubed plus i equaling negative 2x minus 1 plus i mod those coefficients by 3. That's the same as x plus 2 plus i. So in factoring calculations, x cubed can be replaced by x plus 2. And x to the fourth, for example, could be replaced by x squared plus 2x. I just multiplied the representatives by X. And you could figure out what X to the fifth would be replaced by. It could be replaced by X cubed plus two X squared, but then you can replace the X cubed by X plus two. I should probably write that down. X to the fifth plus I is the same as X cubed plus two X squared plus I, but X cubed can be replaced by X plus two. So x to the fifth can be replaced by 
two x squared plus x plus two. Weird, but true, if I've not made a mistake. So I went kind of fast. I'm just doing cosec calculations and multiplying to get from here to here, multiplying the representatives by x to get from here to here, multiplying them by x, and then replacing x cubed with x plus two and simplifying. 